worship him. Worship Jesus. Say, so Jesus, I worship you. None other God beside you. Not before you, none after, and none is no. Jesus, we bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We adore you. And thank you for you that have blessed us through your blood. That while we are here today, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. It's all Jesus because he is our savior. It's all about Jesus because he is our rock. It's all about Jesus because he is our good shepherd. It's all about Jesus because he is the bread of life. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. And I would have to you, it's all about Jesus because he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Without the way you can't know. Without the truth you can't know. And without the way you can't go. God bless you. In Jesus name. Holy Ghost. Thank you Jesus. Amen. You all be seated for a moment in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. I'm glad for this opportunity. One more time. To be in the house of the Lord. Among God's wonderful people. Amen. And also that I'm counted worthy. Amen. To bring forth the word of God today. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because, you know, if God doesn't choose you to do something, then you know. Amen. And I just take the time out to greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Greetings to our Bishop, Bishop John Williams. Truly a man of God, a prophet indeed, that God has blessed. And we have seen the work that God done to him, that we can say, yes, truly, this man is a prophet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In whom God is using. Amen. And greetings to all the ministers, to the choir, to the musicians, to the visit, visiting friends who are here for the very first time. Amen. And to all the members of this church and to just about everyone in our congregation today. And greetings to you online that is listening to us and watching us. Amen. And we just pray that God will bless our soul with his word today. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. And before I go a bit further, I just want to say we have a week of prayer. Amen. And my soul have been blessed. I can see the result and the changes that prayer really makes. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Even for things that we didn't even pray about, we can see a different atmosphere. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Even yesterday I was at home and I can see some difference. Amen. Things were uh, okay, of course, but then you see a little bit more smoother blessings around us. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. So I would just want to tell you that, amen, we have done a great work in praying to the Lord. And also we must thank God for the man of God, Bishop John Williams, whom God has given this revelation that we need to pray. And of a truth, if we were at home, yes, we pray. But when we come together, it makes a difference because we hear a different word, amen, and a more a deeper thought in the Lord and more to what more we have to focus on to pray about. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And you know, I just have to say that, amen, this prayer meeting has helped me to pray some more. Amen. And to seek God's face some more. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Today, I just want to focus back, amen, way back in the scripture, Esther. And I just want to look at Esther chapter 3. And a small portion of chapter 4 in Jesus' name. Amen. For the interest of time, I just want to ask, Amen, Missionary Messam to read a portion of Esther chapter 3. Amen. And just maybe 1 to verse 3 of chapter 4. You don't have to read all of it. Amen. But we just want for each and every one of us to have a little understanding of where we are going. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Esther chapter 3. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamedath the Agite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him, and all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. Yes. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Yes. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Amen. Why transgressed thou the king's commandment? Yes. Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, that he heard, he hearkened not unto them. Yes. And they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand. Amen. For he had told them that he was a Jew. Yes. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Yes. Then he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Yes. For they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Amen. I think you can stop there. Amen. Go on chapter 4 and, and a few verse from verse 1. Amen. Chapter 4. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out in the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithsoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping and wailing, and many lay, hand, lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maid and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Amen. Then called Esther for Hattach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hattach went forth to Mordecai onto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened to him and of the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. All right. Okay. Amen. Read chapter 6 and, and chapter 6 and a few verse. Amen. And on that night could not the king sleep. Yes. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlain, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. All right. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise we praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, why I have to read so many is that the whole story of Esther. Amen. It's all exciting. And why? It's because from chapter 1, coming right down, you can see where God has been doing good and working it out for the Jews, his people. Praise the name of Jesus. So, for the interest of time, for those, when you have time to go through it, you can go through from chapter 1, to the last chapter. It's, it's quite a very exciting moment for the Jews. Praise the Lord, which was and which is God's holy people, chosen people. Now today, as I'm looking at Esther, and I just want to point out that what I want to bring across to you is that it reached to a point where Esther had to go before the king and accept the scepter. 
is being stretched out. Anyone that come before the presence of the king and the king doesn't have a favor with that person, that person shall surely die. Praise the name of Jesus. But I just want to go back where it started. That this man, Amen, the, the king gave him a promotion. And you know, not everyone that get promotion can handle it. Praise the name of Jesus. And I want to say that even us as children of God, even sometimes in your workplace, in our country, or in our community, or in church, when some people get promotion, it becomes very dangerous for other people. Praise the name of Jesus. Because when some persons get promotion, they at all times wanted to be seen. And at all times want to make a change about things. Hallelujah. And at all times too, want to get honor, respect, be seen. Everybody must know that I am who I am. That's right. Somebody praise God. Yeah. And so this man, the king called him and gave him a very high promotion. This promotion put him high above all the governors and all the rulers of the land. And so, even when he doesn't have the the the, 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 the feelings are the uh, um what do you say the the you know to go on the street he would just go on the street because he wanted to get some attention so even sometimes he don't even got time to have his breakfast but he will take up a, and his horse and prepare it and go on the road and everybody would bow and say yes respect amen respect hallelujah and because of this there was a certain man and i'm saying this that sometimes we christians we and church members get in a very serious position when some people get promotion because our knowledge according to jesus is that when we should worship, we must worship God alone. Amen. Somebody praise God. Amen. And we understand that all the respect that we might give some people, we have to give them more to the higher, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, which is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. So in this circumstance, Mordecai, who was a Jew, though he was in a foreign land, he knew and he grew up and he knew that the only respect and honor and praise should be given to God Almighty and God Almighty alone. Amen. Somebody praise God. Given their respect, given their coach, we call it coaching, are bowing to him. But he noticed that this man, Haman, wasn't doing anything. He was sitting at the gate as if nobody passing. Somebody praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. And so he says, I am getting fed up of this. He went today. The same thing. He went tomorrow the same thing. He started last week is the same thing. This man not giving no respect to him. And so he inquired and tried to find out where this man come from. Who is he? Who did he 
related to. I want to find out. Then when he go deep into it, he realized that this man was a Jew. Coming from the tribe of the Jews. Hallelujah. And so he said, you know, I just don't eat Mordecai alone. But I hear both Mordecai, his mama, his sister, his brother, his aunt, his niece, and his nephew. And then he found out, he said, I'm going to be further. I just don't like nobody that is a Jew. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. There is a time in our lives that some people hate you just for your belief. Or hate you just for the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But what I want to say to you is you got to stand up strong and believe and trust in the name of Jesus. He will carry you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when this man, Amen, sent out the threat, he didn't just keep it to himself. He said, I'm going to go a bit further. So he went to the king and he didn't carry a monk talk, but he carried a written letter. He said, oh king, I want you to sign to this letter that I've written and it is about the Jews. Hallelujah. Because I notice and you have ordained me and you have promoted me and I've gone to the kingdom and I've seen that these Jews, they are a threat to your kingdom. These Jews are just nothing and we just want to get rid of them. Somebody praise God. And so the king without going into a great investigation, he just signed the decree. Hallelujah. But when Mordecai come to the consciousness that a decree was written and stamped. Hallelujah. And that his people himself was in trouble. He said, no, I got to get down in some fasting and get down in some prayer. Get down in some mourning to God. I got to call on the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Now this is an example for us as children of God. Sometimes you have been threatened in church. Sometimes you have been threatened in your workplace. Sometimes you have been threatened on the street. Sometimes you have been threatened at home among your neighbors. Sometimes you have been threatened somehow. But it's not time for you to sit down and be cozy. But it's time to get up and call to your Savior. Praise the name of Jesus. So, Monica, he refused from eating bread, pleasant bread. He was mourning and doing all that he does to get the attention of God. Because his people was in trouble. Now, Esther was in the palace. She didn't know what was going on. But all of a sudden, she has a suspicion about something. And she sent one of her servants and said, I want you to go and investigate about this matter. What is happening? And so, when she went, she knew that her life and the life of the Jews was in danger. And then Mordecai came to her and said, listen to me. You got to go before the king. Now, at this time, the law was put forth that nobody should come before the king for a certain time unless the king calls for you. Upon 
invite you to come into his presence. All unless when you come into his presence, he will stretch forth the scepter. And then when he stretch forth your scepter, you shall, your life shall be spared. So Hester says, Monica, are you crazy? Do you know, didn't you know that there is a law that is set that any man come before the king without the scepter being stretched forth shall surely die? Mordecai says, matters not. Don't you know that our life is depending on you? Somebody praise God. To say that church, the world is depending on us. Though the Lord change, the world is depending on us. Though situations seem impossible, the world is depending on us. So Esther says, "Listen, to me, Monica. The only way we can make the suspect." Shoulder, 
said the impossible God gonna make it possible come on Jesus gonna make a way begins they prayed it was quiet yes they prayed second day they prayed and fast and the third day they prayed but Esther says can you imagine can you imagine Esther how the Jews prayed Mordecai on his knees the Jews praying. Amen. Then Monica, um, Hester says, It's my time now. Amen. Comes what may. Can you imagine? She get up. She wash herself, went to the bathroom, and tell the maid, Get my royal robe. Yes, sir. And she said, help me dress. But in the meantime, she keep praying and said, God, I'm going to face the king. What comes, what may, I have to face the king. And she dress. But she says, I'm going to the king in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And could you imagine when she put on those robe and the royal robe and she stepped outside the door walking across the hall to the royal palace where the king should sit on his throne and God make it possible that the king was there on time sitting on his royal throne not expecting to see nobody because the law has been put forward no come on I guess the king was getting fed up because too many people were coming in and without any real concern sometimes they come just to say foolishness before the king so the king get fed up and said I don't want to see nobody for a certain time and if you come in make sure I sit I give you an appointment or if you come in make sure you have something tangible that I can that if we can reason about hallelujah so here's Esther step through the door and she says if I perish She was confident that somebody was praying for her. Can I talk to somebody? You want a breakthrough? And it is an impossible thing for you to make that step. You want a deliverance? It seems impossible for you to make that step. But I'm saying to you, just say these words, what comes, what may, it is possible with God. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is the life. Step on, I want you to stand up and say I'm going to step in my victory. It could be one step. But make a step. I want you to make a step. And I just don't want to make a natural step. Make a powerful step. When I step, I step in the name of the Lord. Because 
there is a victory. There is victory in the name of Jesus. I'm making my step. Watch Esther. Esther put on a robe, but she didn't just stay in the room. She didn't just stay in one place and sit and wonder if if she's gonna get through. She said, "I got to go." What comes what may, I got to make a step. So I want you to make a step. One step, two step, three step, four step into my victory. Somebody praise God.
he will hear you. At the Messiah, great is the word of them that diligently seek my face. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will surely answer. He said, I am a God that answers prayer. I am a God that is ready to listen to your cry. So come on. Stretch forth 
You don't have to worry. You're sick. You don't have to have more different thinking or a negative thinking. The scepter is stretched in your favor. God has answered your prayer. God has answered. Tell somebody beside you. God has answered my prayer. The scepter is stretched out. Hallelujah. In my favor. In my favor. There is deliverance. In my favor. There is healing. In my favor. There is a breakthrough. Hallelujah. The center. Is stretched out. For the instance of time. The man of God is coming on to pray with you. Amen. Just step out by faith. And God will do the rest. God will allow the sector to be stretched out. In your favor. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.